Um, we're, our lightning talk is just going to be talking about our first full year of the uh, Matterhorn service. As you've probably heard and know, uh, the, uh, the Matterhorn has uh, grown up in the University of Saskatchewan from uh, its own local development and to, uh, into a Recollect server and then into finally Matterhorn and uh, running as a pilot uh, uh, two years ago and then finally this year with the Department or the Division of ITS uh, is now a full featured service of the, of the campus. And we began um, just this last fall, September uh, 2011. So we're celebrating one year of Matterhorn. Yay! <laughs> um, so as you know, I'm Adam McKenzie. And I'm Jonathan Bird. And uh, today we're just going to run through quickly some of the things of our, our rooms, the equipment that we use in the rooms, um, some of the results that we've seen from the, uh, um, the, the um, Matterhorn uh, viewing and the students' usage of the rooms, as well as uh, what we plan for next year. Okay, starting off with the rooms. Uh, we have three different levels of rooms where we have uh, seminar rooms, which is a smaller, like a uh, boardroom style, or uh, classrooms, and then we have the lecture theaters and uh, lecture rooms, and then the theaters, which are quite large uh, rooms. And as you can see, we have them split between uh, some that just have the um, presentation and the audio and then of course the video and the presentation and audio as well um, for a total of 12 rooms this past uh, school year and um, we did have a couple of extras in uh, another room that we had and we used one another one for um, uh, believe it or not a lecture capture of a video conference unit but those aren't listed on here they were just testing that particular setup and just to go through briefly a qu uh, quick uh, overview of what our typical lecture uh, rooms look like. Of course, we have the, all of the standard equipment in the front. It's uh, all installed by our AV department. And so we get uh, our particular cabinets, uh, and we open the bottom cabinet door, and the bottom back side of it, we get a little tiny corner for our Matterhorn unit. And as you can see, the dust is building up nice on the unit itself. And so, of course, we're using the reference unit that uh, was developed at the University of Saskatchewan and um, right now that's all of our units are those particular ones. Adam? So I'm just going to talk a little bit about our equipment. Uh, about our equipment. Uh, we basically have a uh, switching uh, unit in front of all of our Matterhorn capture units that uh, give us the, the resolution we're looking for and switches between devices like we have some rooms with uh, two symposiums they're uh, pen-enabled uh, surfaces so that instructors can do math and they write out all their equations and stuff and so then we can capture that live. Uh, anywhere from there to cameras, to document cameras, uh, to VHS, which is hugely popular, and uh, other stuff like that. <laughs> uh, like Jonathan mentioned, we were using the reference capture agent. We have tiny little security uh, cameras often way in the back uh, w with the presentation room that would have, uh, in the old days, held uh, slide projectors and that kind of thing. And then we've got some IP cameras now kicking around that uh, um, are a little bit uh, better high def and controllable remotely and that kind of thing. Uh, so we have some results from our, uh, our two last terms here. Uh, we captured uh, 11 classes, uh, oh no, sorry, 11 rooms in, um, in the fall of 2011, and we captured 12 room or 12 classes, bleh, uh, 12 rooms in uh, the springtime. So just the last four months. Uh, for the first term, we had uh, 18 classes, uh, and the second term we had 10 classes. We often notice that we drop off in the number of classes for the second term. We're not entirely sure why. Uh, the asterisk is because one of the classes we offered was actually recut video. Uh, one of the agriculture professors wanted to deliver the exact same videos from the previous semester, uh, just one of them in a different uh, lengths in a different order. So that was a lot of fun to spend all the effort of cutting all those and getting them up and ready and re running and that kind of thing. Uh, for the fall, we had uh, 1,482 unique users log into the system and use it. Uh, we had 1,149 for the second term. Uh, for the unique number of sessions, we had 8,500 in the first term uh, with more users, and we had 10,000 in the second term. Um, the average amount of time that people watched videos uh, in the first term was almost 180 minutes. 
which is pretty, pretty awesome. And we had uh, 290 minutes just about for the second term. Uh, and then we only kind of have the running total of the maximum number of people that were streaming at once, and that was uh, 48 in the fall. Okay, so now we'll go into future plans. And the future plans are pretty easy. We just want to add nine more units to the, <laughs> to the stack this, uh, this summer. We're actually going to be adding them uh, hopefully in the next month. And um, we're looking at some of the, uh, the vended units for uh, simplifying our installations. Uh, the, the reference unit itself, the ones we've been using all along have been very, very well, uh, done very well, and they've been very stable for us. Um, we uh, are looking to have our AV department be the ones that do all the installations of the classrooms, and uh, if they have a unit, they can just simply uh, buy uh, from one of the companies and install and set up and, and ready to go, then we re we're looking for, for that instead of the simplicity of that rather than having the, uh, the full-featured uh, capture agent box that we build ourselves and, and having to worry about all the parts and uh, warranty of these individual parts and things like that. Um, so, so we're trying to go for a, a unit that we can uh, we can test, uh, so that we can use in there. But we're still testing them to find out which one we are going to use, because some of them are still some of them are still new. And one thing we're going to try in a few classrooms, which has been tested in one lecture theater in our on our campus, is what uh, we call our backup microphone, and it's just simply a microphone that will be sitting on the podium for the for the area classroom, and it's going to be set up so that if there's no audio detected on the lapel mic or any of these other sources, this one will be kicked in and, and be the one that's uh, uh, the source for the class. And so far, it seems to be okay. Uh, it's it's obviously better to have the lapel mic working properly and have it turned on and the batteries working than it is to have a room microphone, uh, especially if the room microphone is close to the front row where there's people uh, talking and moving around. But uh, it, it is better than nothing in most cases. Yeah. And so after one year, we're hoping for many more years of, of happy Matterhorn. And so if anybody needs to get a hold of us, there's our email addresses, and I'm on Twitter as well. And I know Adam is on Twitter, but doesn't use it, so. I posted it in May of 2009. Come on. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Any questions? All right. Uh, hi, guys. Hi. Uh, you, you, you spoke about having a backup microphone. Exactly how do you switch? from the lapel mics to the backup microphone? Uh, I, the information I got for that was that that actually is going to be set up by our, the AD, AV department, and it's going to be part of that switching diagram that you saw there. And I'm not exactly sure of the technical details in there, but their intention is that if the lapel mic is not getting the signal, that the, 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 D, uh, the switcher will actually use that to other source. And again, I don't know the exact details of that. Yeah. My so, way. Yeah, it's outside the Matterhorn. It's outside the capture agent. It's it's where we just take whatever the room source uh, is, and that particular one. Yes, about the backup backup microphone, we we have already one uh, as you, and I, for us a good solution is to record both audios, each with each video. So if you allow in the engage player the user to change the video, he can change the full quality in the full quality audio from the presenter to the backup audio. So if he's not hearing, he can change. So I think it's a cheap solution and and you need no work to make it work. Anyway, it's quite a good numbers. Yeah. Any other questions? Thank you.